In chapter eight, we're going to move back to looking at polygons and moving away from specifically just looking at triangles and right triangles. Here is a point of review. When we have a polygon, we have a number of vertices of the polygon. And if we take and draw diagonals from the vertice to any other non-consecutive vertice, and so a, ver a consecutive vertex is one that is on the same line as that uh, edge of the polygon, we're able to break our polygon then into multiple triangles. This becomes the basis for being able to determine the sum of the measure of all of the interior angles. We've seen this formula before, n minus 2 times 180, where n is the number of sides, minus 2 times 180 gives us the total sum of all of the angles inside of that polygon. The reason this works is I have two consecutive vertices, and then if I draw diagonals to all of the other vertices, I've taken away two, I end up with a number of triangles, in this case four, six minus two is four, four times 180, and then I get my uh, measurement of my interior angles. When I'm looking at a quadrilateral, quadrilateral is a four-sided figure, so I know that the sum of a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure, is going to be 360. Triangles 180, I have two triangles and a quadrilateral. If I were to draw that out and draw my diagonal, I have two triangles here. With those two triangles, I get 360 degrees total for the measurement of my interior angles. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that the measure of the angles are not all necessarily the same. In the past, we've looked at the idea of regular polygons. And a regular polygon is equilateral and equiangular. All the sides are the same measure and all the angles are the same measure. That does not have to be true for my n minus 2 times 180 to work. In this case, I have an eight-sided figure. I can see not all of the angles or sides are going to be the same, but still, when I apply my n minus 2 times 180, I get a total measurement of all of the angles of 1,080 degrees. If I know the number of sides, I can find the sum of the angles. If I know the sum of the angles, in this case, it's 900, I simply apply that into my formula and I can solve for n. When I do my math, I divide both sides by 180, I get n minus 2 is 5 and n equals 7. So I know that if I have a seven-sided figure, the sum of the interior angles will always add up to 900 degrees. What that does then is it allows me to solve for the measurement of angles within that polygon. In this case, I have a four-sided figure. I know the sum is going to be 360 degrees. I add up all four of the angles, and then I simply solve for x. So I know in this case, x is going to be 72 degrees. In this example, I have a five-sided figure. So I'm going to have 5 minus 2 times 180. And that's going to end up giving me 540 degrees. Now I know this plus this plus this plus these two, and those are going to be the same. So we would set this up to say 2x, this is x, this is x, I have 2x, plus 93, plus 156, plus 85. That's going to all equal 540 degrees. And now I can add that up, move it over here. I'll divide both sides by 2, and I'll be able to solve for x. While the formula to find the measure, the sum of the measure of all of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180, 
the exterior angles will always add up to 360 degrees. It doesn't matter if it's four sides or 400 sides. It will always add up for a convex polygon to 360 degrees. What that does is again allow me to solve for uh, exterior angle measurements. Remember the exterior angle is essentially created by taking a side and extending it out. And then I have an outside angle. I have a side extended out and I have an outside angle. Remember the exterior angle is gonna be supplementary to the interior angle because they create a linear pair. So in this case, I can set up my equation, x plus 2x plus 89 plus 67 equals 360. It's always 360. Then I can solve for x. What I have to remember here is in this case, that angle would be 68 degrees. In this case, it's going to be 2 times 68 degrees or 136 degrees. I can test my math. I can add all that up and it should equal 360. In lesson 8.2, we're now gonna be looking specifically at parallelograms. And remember, a parallelogram is defined as a quadrilateral where both sets of opposite sides are parallel. The way I show that a uh, quadrilateral is a parallelogram is with this little parallelogram symbol. So I know in this case, from the red arrows that this drawing is a parallelogram, but I also see the definition here is such that it's a parallelogram. When I know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, not only are the opposite sides parallel, but they're also congruent or equal. So those two sides will be equal to each other and those two sides will be equal to each other. The same is true for my opposite angles. So those angles, they're opposite each other, are gonna be equal to each other. And those angles are gonna be equal to each other. So by knowing that something is a parallelogram, I know that opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are equal, and opposite angles are equal as well. Here's an example where I can use that since it is a parallelogram, again, I can see by the red arrows, I know that the side of x plus 4 is going to be equal to 12, and so then I can solve for x. The other thing I know is that these opposite angles are equal, so I know right off the bat that y is going to equal 65 degrees. I know that information because it's a parallelogram, and even if it wasn't mentioned here in the explanation, I know from the drawing that this is going to be a parallelogram so that all of those relationships hold true. A couple more examples. If I'm looking for the side FG, well, I know that's going to be equal to 8 opposite sides are equal. The measure of angle G is going to be equal to 60 degrees. So because it's a parallelogram, I know that's true. This is just like the example we did before. I can set up Y plus 3 equals 18 in order to solve for Y, and I know that 2X is going to equal 50. As we've done many times in the past, We've we can use our relationship of two parallel lines and a transversal to tell us something else. We know that these are called consecutive interior angles. We studied that before and we know that they're supplementary. Well, in a parallelogram, I have a bunch of pairs of consecutive interior angles. Therefore, consecutive angles are all going to be supplementary. They're going to add up to 180 degrees. Remember, opposite angles are equal, and all consecutive angle pairs 
are going to be supplementary. And again, I know that from the work we've done before looking at two parallel lines and a transversal. One last um, theorem that is true about parallel lines, or excuse me, parallelograms, is that when I draw diagonals and I draw both of my diagonals, the diagonals bisect each other. You can see this side is going to be equal to that side and that side on that side. This is not saying that the diagonals are the same length. What it's saying is that when I draw both sets of diagonals, that they bisect each other and cut each other in half. So here's an example. Again, I know this is a parallelogram, even though I don't have the red arrows. That tells me it's a parallelogram and I can pretty quickly find a lot of information. I know this angle is going to be 110 degrees because it's going to be equal to that. I know this angle is going to be 70 degrees because these two angles are going to be supplementary. They add up to 180. I know that if this side is 2, then this side is also going to be 2 because the diagonals themselves are going to be um, bisecting each other. So I know both sides of that will be two. Lesson 8.3 is essentially a continuation of lesson 8.2. And we've done this oftentimes in the past. We often start with defining a drawing and then look at all of the properties of that. In lesson 8.3, we're gonna look at the properties of a drawing in order to define it. So these first two theorems tell us that if I know I have a four-sided figure and the opposite sides are all going to be equal, those two are equal, those two are equal, then I know by definition, I'm working with a parallelogram. Same thing is true if I know I have two sets of opposite angles being equal, then again, I know by definition that this quadrilateral is going to be a parallel, a parallelogram. So my four-sided figure, opposite sides are equal. Parallelogram, both pair of opposite angles are equal, also a parallelogram. One other thing to remember is that a rectangle and a square are both just special types of parallelograms. Opposite sides are equal, opposite angles are equal, so they still fit all of the properties of a parallelogram. They're just special cases of them. So if I were to be looking at this figure, I'm trying to determine, do I know for sure that this is a parallelogram? Well, the first thing I notice is that those two sides are the same length. Then I notice those two sides are also the same length. And therefore, by definition, I know that that drawing is going to be a parallelogram. A couple of other things. If I know that I have two parallel lines that have the same measurement, they're equal in length, then by definition, my quadrilateral will be a parallelogram. So again, if I know I have two parallel lines and those parallel lines have the same length, then when I complete out my quadrilateral, I know I've completed a parallelogram. And the last way to test is if I draw my diagonals, as we looked at in lesson 8.2, if the diagonals bisect each other, then I also know that I'm working with a parallelogram. So a number of different ways to apply the properties to a quadrilateral to determine if indeed it is a parallelogram. In this example, the first thing I know is that those two sides are going to be the same. And I want to create a parallelogram 
which then says I have to set this side equal to that so that that uh, diagonal gets bisected as well. I set up my equation and I solve for x. And so I know when x is 4, that's going to be 12. That's going to be 12. They're going to be equal. In that case, then, both of my diagonals are bisected. They bisect each other. Therefore, by definition, those properties show me that this will then be a parallelogram. A couple of quick examples. Two parallel lines, same measure. I know that's a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal. I know that's a parallelogram. Opposite angles are equal. I know all three of those are parallelograms using the different properties that we just looked at. Here's a great summary of the key things that we've looked at as it relates to parallelograms. I either know that opposite sides are both parallel, they're equal, I look at opposite angles, parallel lines that are equal, and I look at the diagonals bisecting each other. So any of these five ways are able to be used to show that a quadrilateral is indeed a parallelogram.